Um, but start with Senalytics if you're okay with that. Um, sure. So we so if you're looking at so so we have senescent cells. Senescent cells build up in our body, and you can remove. So do you use Senalytics in your practice? And which which particular Senalytics do you use? Yeah, Senalytics are very very important. Uh, Senalytics is basically a brand new concept in medicine. I mean, it doesn't make its first appearance until 2011, in which they show removing senescent cells is increasing having effect. And it's not until basically 2016 that they come up with an actual senolytic that they can give to animals. And I uh, know the course they, they come up with like the combination of the and quercetin, and they come up with, they do one study in which they actually use fisetin and show like fisetin and fisetin is increasing the lifespan of all the mice, which is extraordinary in that fisetin or fisetin is like available on the market as a supplement so people can actually get it. Mm. But the ones I use in my practice is if younger people, I just tell them to take fisetin and with older people, I use the satin and quercetin. And, uh, and I also, uh, and for the most sort of like uh, ex uh, ex uh, traumatic sort of like indications, like an older person or you know, early like suspicious for uh, developing Alzheimer's disease. I use the program that they're now using in San Antonio, Texas. So San Antonio, Texas, they're at the actual world leader. And there's a whole lot of anti-aging stuff, especially Alzheimer's disease. And now they're using a program in which they're using the satin and quercetin two days in a row every fortnight. Mm. They're doing it for three months. Uh, so like bi-weekly. Uh, I like to say every fortnight because bi-weekly is an a, a unclear word. Mm. It's like it's twice a week or every two weeks. So I like right. bi-weekly. I like every fortnight. But anyway, they're using that in San Antonio. And I'm basically using their same, I'm copying the San Antonio program. And the San Antonio program is a, a very, very good program. And it's based on a 2018 paper, which showed that the cells in Alzheimer's disease, the neurons with neurofibrillary tangles, which for like a hundred years, nobody knew what they were doing, turned out that they were senescent cells. And uh, the San Antonio people, they were calling them toxic zombie cells, which I thought was like a much better terminology for them. So they're there and they're like press release. They said they're removing toxic zombie cells. But in the sort of like uh, 2018 paper, which they modeled the, the research, the like treatment plan after that the, the they did that same institution, they showed that when they had mice with advanced uh, disease due to tau, and they gave them the desatin and quercetin, they stopped the disease. Mm -hmm. They stopped it, they did not reverse irreversible brain damage, but they stopped the progression of the disease. Uh, but, so I'm using their, their uh, protocol. I just use it earlier because I want to use it before this irreversible brain damage. Right, but, and, I, and I use that. I actually uh, you take that same protocol myself. I find it so so just because I'm seventy eight. But I think, but I took that their protocol of two days in a row every fortnight with quercetin. <laughs> I thought that was like the best program. And they had developed that. I sort of like I just followed their program. Right. So, could you talk about the um, the dosage? for the satinib and quercetin that you use? Uh, I usually use, uh, depending on how, uh, how serious the condition is. As I said, like the most mm. serious condition that they're using it for early Alzheimer's disease, they use it 100 milligrams two days in a row with mm. 1,000 milligrams of quercetin the same two days. Mm -hmm. uh, Usually with people who would just don't have any significant problems, they're just older, um, frequently use it one day, uh, one day, once a month. 
or if people can tolerate it two days in a row every other month, like the protocol that I use. Sort of like varies depending upon how well people tolerate it. So, but most, about half the people tolerate it very, very nicely. Some people, a bit of people have problems. Most people have already had problems in the first day. So I start off with a low, very low dose, like initially. I think the side effects are, for, are the effects of removing the senescent cells themselves. That's my, my, what I think, because why they have side effects initially, but after using it by the second time or third time, not having any side effects. Right. I use it, I take it, so I got, but uh, the side effects are gel, but the gel you start using it initially, but I think that the satum and quercetin, it's a very good combination. But fisetin also seems to be good. The question is the dose, the use and dose I use of fisetin is around 1200 milligrams a day for five days in a row, once a month. It's a typical sort of like dose. Wow. So, so you did say that you suggested fisetin for younger people and well, this, like people who well, like quercetin and tisotinib is a much more potent drug. Right. Quercetin, uh, I'm not saying that quercetin is sort of like, you know, it's not, it's not as good, but it's something that's very easily available. It doesn't have any side effects. You can just buy it on the internet as a supplement. So right. if you're like 60 years old, you could just sort of like use like fisetin and you didn't have any good health and didn't have any problems. Seems like more sense to use fisetin than to try to use Tisotinib, which would be like people who have more significant problems and, and older. Right. Okay. Like yeah. That... Use, yeah. Just as like I use Tisotinib, but I'm 78, and I'm concerned also of the heart disease and like so forth. So I'd like use a, a higher dose. But the, right. but the idea, uh, the Cerelix seem very, very good. And it's just a case of uh, maybe they're developing better senolytics in time. The senolytics are very interesting in that they're basically, right, the satin, the satin is an anti-leukemia drug. Hmm. The idea is that the cancer cells, and especially these leukemia cells, they're using the same pathway to stay, um, to avoid apoptosis or program cell death that the senescent cells are using. <laughs> the each use of the cancer cells because the cancer cells, the body would tell them, you guys look like you're out of control. You should turn yourself off. And the cancer cell says, no, we're not doing that. That's what you can't tell them to like kill themselves. And they have very strong anti apoptosis pathways preventing that. So that some of the anti-cancer drugs, they turn off those pathways, then the cells go through apoptosis and die. That's the same path, but that's the same thing that the most of the senescent drugs are using. Okay. okay, so yes, yeah, so as you mentioned, like dasatinib is a uh, is a regulated drug, right? So, do you think there's any alternative that people could take to dasatinib? No, if they're not getting a prescription for dasatinib. That's why I said. There's like fisetin. Fight, um, just take fisetin. Yeah. But I think I don't think there's anything else besides those two. Okay. I mean, there's no other. There's nothing else that's approved. And not, right. I mean, not not I mean, approved. There's nothing. None of this is uh, approved. There's nothing else. <laughs> say that's yeah. been like available. It's not. Right. It's not something on the market. I just, generally, in there's different studies. They sometimes have used unapproved drugs that they're working on. Or sometimes you use special drugs that they make up to just show that this drug kills the senescent cell and it stops the disease. But of the things that are like that you can write a prescription for, is uh, the satin is the only one. Right, got it. So one one last question on senescent cells. So do you um, do you test your patients for their levels of senescent cells? I mean, do you have an assay for senescent level in the body? Yeah, well, I could, but I don't think people, but I don't, you'd have to do a biopsy. Okay. So, in other words, in like the skin, you could like biopsy some people's skin and you can see the level of senescent cells. But they also have, in other words, in experimental studies, they'll do blood levels for the different 
uh, SASP factors, like different sort of like chemical th inflammatory things that senescent cells are making. The, none of those are available commercially. In other words, I can't order any of those tests. They're, they're just sort of like research tests. I can't order a senescent cell panel and send them to Quest. <laughs> they're, they're, they're not available. I would be, but your suggestion, like, let me just measure your level of senescent cells. That would be great, but it's not available now. I hope that you found the video informative. Please do hit the thumbs up button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell button for any new video release notifications. Thank you so much for your kind support. I wish you all well, and we'll speak to you again soon.